Oh, <laughs> he's pinned it. <laughs> Hi everyone, Nick here from Hidden Valley Bushcraft and today I'm going to be talking about some of my top tips for natural navigation so that you guys at home hopefully never get lost again. Now, uh, which way back was it? I've chosen today to film this for a particular reason. It's one of those horrible mix of weathers type day here in the UK where I can't honestly say I really, with great confidence, know which direction the sun is coming from. Uh, it might rain, but it's kind of muggy and hot. In fact, it's perfect storm conditions right now. So if I was out in a big national park or country park, uh, as we have all over the globe, doesn't matter if you're in Australia or whether you're in America or whether you're in the UK, okay, you know the ones, you go out with the family, all excited for a big walk and you kind of stray off the path to go and look at some cool stuff or you might see the, the shortcut down to the falls or whatever it is and suddenly you've taken a few steps off the path and you can't find your way back. So in today's video I'm going to be talking about the clues that Mother Nature leaves behind that we can use to try and uh, stop and assess and kind of make ourselves a compass uh, to try and wayfare or work our way back to the car park or wherever it is that we, we originated from. Obviously we're assuming that we haven't just fallen out of a plane and landed in the middle of nowhere. Okay, we're gonna have some prior knowledge. I'm going with the kind of the scenario that we hear about the most on the news. As I said, you've come to a big country park where there are these great big paths and usually some level of signage, but nonetheless, these things are hundreds of, if not thousands of acres of land, and it is quite easy to get disorientated. As you can see, the footpath signs have been snapped off here for some, some reason, but uh, as I head off into the forest deeper and deeper, these paths are gonna narrow into little windy paths, and then before you know it, we won't be able to recognize the way back at all. Disorientation is something that everybody gets at some point in their life. And what I'm talking about now is not just the physical disorientation, but mental disorientation. Okay, we all kind of lose our way a little bit. And I think where this kind of ties in nicely to the whole kind of boosting and fortifying your mental, your mental fitness and your mental attitude to life is the fact that if you can find your way out of just about anywhere without map or compass, that gives you a strong confidence and a level of control in an otherwise uncontrollable situation. Okay, and it is quite literally the physical representation of what can happen mentally. We can lose our way in life. So uh, keeping up these skills, practicing these skills, for me, makes me feel empowered, makes me feel confident, and I go into uh, the unknown or unknown situations in life and, uh, and I navigate them as best I can, all the while knowing that I have, I have the skills to do this. I can do this. I can get through whatever life throws at me. So, uh, right, we're starting, to, we're starting to meet, several paths are gonna meet here now. We're hitting a bit of a crossroads. Okay, and guys, this stuff really is all about choices. It's about stopping, assessing, learning to read the clues and then making a choice based on what you see around you. Now, I refer to these as indicators, okay? So natural navigation indicators, just like as a Royal Marine out on patrol, we'd have combat indicators. Combat indicators in a past life were the absence of the norm or normal patterns of life or normal things that you'd expect to be going on in the area you're working in uh, and the presence of the abnormal. Okay, so it might be that you're coming up to a junction or a bridge or something. Something's not quite right. You can see there's been some digging on the path. You can see there's a plastic bottle halfway up a tree. You know, think things are really not right here. And more often than not, that would be saving people's lives. In the same way, okay, once we learn to become comfortable and we're starting to really master the outdoors, we can kind of start to read this landscape in a completely different way. 
Okay, so I'm gonna show you some top tips now. Let's get into it. So what this comes down to is it's about learning the constants of mother nature, okay? Those constant stresses upon the landscape, whether it's what the sun does for us, whether it's the wind, and we're gonna break that down into a few key bits and pieces, okay, that you can, you can use, because obviously today, as I said, it's fairly overcast. However, if I was looking down this path here, okay, you can quite clearly see there's an awful lot more light coming from this way. So behind that cloud up there somewhere is the sun. So my first move is I'm gonna head up to here, see if I can get to an opening on the side of the woodland. And then we'll talk about a few bits up there. So another interesting point here is I'm heading uphill. So the other benefit of doing this or climbing a tree or whatever it's gonna be is gaining a bit of height. Gives me the ability to maybe see a bit further over the top of the tree canopy or across that distant landscape. I might start to notice a feature, you know, that I recognize and that I can head for. Or it might be that the giveaway is perhaps something like the way that the farmer has laid out the fields. Okay, if there is civilization nearby, it might be that I can see clearly all the animals grazing on one side of a valley and all the crops have been planted on another. That's all to do with the sun tracking through the sky and the farmer using and optimizing the sun's energy to grow better crops. So you're gonna find those on the south facing slopes. So we're heading up this hill and we'll uh, have a chat when we get to the top. That's a good example of what I'm talking about. So in front of me, humongous brown plowed field, okay? Ideal, perfect for growing crop. And yet the slope up on that side, just on the edge of this wood block, there's a slope. This land, nothing's been done with it whatsoever. Think about where the sun is behind me right now. And given the time of day, which is pretty much just before midday, so the sun's at its absolute zenith, there's a very strong possibility at this point that that is south and that this is going to be north, roughly but we can use one or more indicators to put that theory together. Now, if you have got a strong enough sun in the sky, you could go with a well-known survival technique, which is known as the stick method. Okay, so I placed my stick in the ground, and now my biggest problem is the lack of sunshine as it's gone behind a cloud again. So this is a great example of why this kind of classic go-to, it's always told and used in all the survival all the survival books you'll see out there, yeah, just stick a stick in the ground. Well, that's great, but you need the sun to play ball with you, because right now, that's up behind the clouds there somewhere. So we're gonna go ahead anyway. I'm gonna go through the motions, and hopefully, I'd like to think we're gonna get away with it today. Hopefully, here comes back our shadow any moment. And hopefully, you guys at home can see the sun is striking this side of the stick and casting a shadow, okay? Giving us our very first point. So I'm just gonna use this fur cone Okay, so where I run out of shadow, I'm just going to place this little fur cone down here, all right? Now all we're going to do is wait 15 to 30 minutes and watch how this, as the sun tracks across the sky, okay, from, from its original point, a land of the rising sun in the east, sets in the west, this shadow will have moved, okay, and I'm going to place down my next uh, item, whatever that's going to be, and then we're going to place a, a nice straight stick between the two, and that should give me a nice uh, east-west line. So that has been 15 minutes. That is the minimum amount of time that I would suggest you, if you are going to go with this method. The wind started picking up and I was a bit worried the pine cone was gonna roll away. So I just went and foraged up two little sticks. Now the first one I put down, or the pine cone as it were, this is my westerly stick. That's always your first one is always your westerly stick. And then this is my easterly stick. Now to work out, a little compass on the floor here. What I can do, I could go and forage some more sticks or as this is no longer needed, I'm gonna pull this out and I'm gonna lay this across the back here so that it's touching the two points of the sticks I've pushed in the ground. Now this is giving me a much larger and easier to read west and east. Okay, what we do now is move around so that the stick is right across the front of me. Okay, and think about this, on the points of your compass, never eat shredded wheat. So if you guys want to go a step further, just find yourself another straightish stick and lay that in the gate between the two. 
and you're going to have yourself the points of the compass north, east, south and west. Okay, so that's fairly straightforward as I pan round. Okay, now I know that the car park where I set off from this morning is to the west because I was traveling in an easterly direction as I left. So to find my way back, I need to be heading back into that woodland without getting too confused at the bottom of those crossroads. I could even take a straight line through the woods on a westerly bearing. But how would I maintain that westerly bearing once I've left my little compass here? We're gonna work on that in just a moment. A big giveaway in the outdoors when you're trying to find your way back is the fact, thinking about those constants, thinking about the sun, the wind, and the rain. The sun, okay, so you think about this. Where is the sun or where has the sun been? And the big giveaway is the fact that all trees and plants, to a degree, heliotrope. It's a big word. Heliotropism is the word that we give or for the describing of plants and trees following the sun across its tract in the sky. Now, the way this plays out in front of me here, just in this little opening I can already see, is I can make out the presence of these lovely little bluebell flowers here, okay, and everything to the right of me has little bluebells on show. Everything to the left of me here, which has been in the shadow of the sun, as the sun goes across the sky every single day, these aren't getting enough sunlight, so they've not come out into flower. So that's interesting. So that's gonna give me an indication of what the sun is doing. And I need to be able to read that and reverse it and think to myself, if there's nothing growing down here, then that is more likely to be north. Okay, everything that's on the, getting that, that, that south facing sun is gonna be on this side of me at the moment. The other giveaway is when I look at the body language of some of the trees. Now, just take this cross section here. There is more growth coming off of these trees going out towards the sun, okay, than there is on the leeward side out this way. So the presence of the sun is telling me with that kind of tick effect that the sun is this way, so this is south, and the lack of branches on this side is telling me that this is north. And again, you'll get used to this. The more you practice this stuff, the more it'll all kind of start to make sense. So based on that, south, north indicator, I am now heading west. I'm heading in the direction I probably need to be heading in to get back to the car park. Let's carry on. Okay, another big sun indicator, and you can see just on this little tree here, is on the southern side where it's getting lots of light. Okay, it's pretty chilled out, and I guess when I go around this side, I'm probably gonna start to see the presence of a lot more moss. Okay, and we can see it's a lot darker and a lot greener, and you can see all this moss here. And again, that is indicating, that's falling in line with everything else that I've seen so far, that that is north, this is south, and I'm heading in a westerly direction. Okay, let's move on and look at something else, and we're gonna talk about wind. Okay guys, so another easy peasy indicator, right now we're talking and focusing about wind, is where has the wind been, or where is the wind coming from? Now, it's a well-known fact the wind is not gonna come from the same direction every single day. But what it is gonna do, through large storms and constant wind pressures is it's gonna shape the landscape around us and it's gonna leave telltale markers. Now one I can see straight away, and I've just walked past not one, not two, but three wind-blown small diameter trees. Everything I'm looking at, all the wind-blown timber, all the way around me is lying in this direction. Okay, is lying back up towards there, back towards where I've pretty much just come from Bearing in mind that was our wayfaring tree we used for the moss. So south, north, okay, that's east. So we know that if those wind-blown trees have fallen in a northeasterly direction, my constant wind stresses are coming from a southwesterly, which actually makes complete sense for where I am in the southwest of the UK because the little knowledge I do have is that the constant wind stresses are from the southwest. In 1986, there was an enormous storm here in the UK. And in fact, we lost millions, not just hundreds of thousands, but millions of trees were knocked down in that one massive freak storm. And we can still see the effects of it on British woodlands today. And I've hit a path. Okay, this is good. Next question. 
but which way? If you use the pass, obviously it's going to go a lot faster than trying to cross grade your way through the landscape. But as it's not getting dark yet and I've got the time to do this, I'm just going to go ahead and keep going and see if I can get down this next stage of the, uh, the journey. Okay, let's, let's be brave. Let's head on into the undergrowth some more. Okay, I appear to be down on a track. And there's a body of water moving through here. And I, I definitely remember I left the car on the other side of the water course on the bottom of the feature. So I've now crossed over when I went to make this video this morning. So I'm going to head down this path here in a bid to connect up with this one that looks like it goes around the edge of the lake. Otherwise, I'm going to have to cross this rather gnarly looking water course down here. So my plan is to head up to this junction, pan round so I'm back on that westerly bearing and head off up into that wood there and up the car park's got to be a kilometer up through there somewhere. OK, so as I come up through here, let's take a look at this. I've just got my phone out just for the purpose of today's video as a confirmation tool. And I am, in fact, heading spot on westerly and I've just hit the original crossroads I came in on. And I know on the edge of this tree line here, here's the big pine wood block that I came in on that the car is just up here. So that's worked out pretty well. If you haven't got access to vast swathes of woodland, look, you can do this anywhere. And in fact, urban navigation can be quite good fun as well. It's less about looking at the signs and all the information that's under your nose, and much more about starting to see how, perhaps on the side of a building, the sun has really like bleached or, or that paintwork is blistering from those constant sun stresses. Or perhaps the fact that when you walk down the street, every single satellite dish is facing exactly the same direction. Stop looking at this level and start looking up. Start looking down, start looking all around you and start really honing in on these little key signs. I think from memory, the satellite dishes in our area are all facing south, southeast. So if I wanted to put my kind of imaginary compass down and I was in Bristol, Bath, one of the nearby cities to here, all I need to do is look up and I can see all those satellite dishes, everything pointing south, southeast. And from there, I can just easily work out my compass, never eat shredded wheat. I'll make lots more videos on how to use a compass, what to do when you've genuinely got lost in the woods. It's got dark. We'll go through that whole stuff. But for now, get out there, have a little practice, see how you get on. Let me know in the comments box below. I'd love to know how you got on with trying out some of this stuff. Thanks for watching. I'm Nick Goldsmith from Hidden Valley Bushcraft. If you like what you saw today, please hit the subscribe button and tell as many of your uh, friends as possible uh, as we continue to grow this channel and let us know what it is you want to see next because, you know, natural navigation was always going to be on the list as is overnighters, as is all the other kind of stuff you'd expect of a bushcraft channel. But that's not to say that it stops there. If there's something you're particularly interested in, in the outdoors, we'll do our best to try and cover it for you. So let us know in the box below. It's very important because you guys at home help to shape our channel. Thanks for now. Speak soon. Bye-bye. <laughs>